so if someone was uh, casted for a new prosthesis, we would end up with a negative cast of the patient's residual limb. Uh, it can be casted over their skin or a prosthetic line or whatever the interface is going to be to the patient's limb. We would take the cast over. Uh, if we're going to do a traditional prosthetic modification using plaster, the next step would be to come to the sandbox. We actually have one already in here that's prep mixed plaster and water. And we just filled one earlier. So that when we mix it together, we fill it in there in liquid form. It then hardens. We take it back out of the sandbox and come over to the modification station where then the outer cast is stripped off. And then you're left with a positive model of the patient's cast. Essentially, the prosthetist's job to shape this in a manner that will achieve a optimum comfortable fit for the patient. Uh, for example, if we wanted to load in a traditional prosthesis, uh, the patella tendon, we would take a full round rasp. And at that level, begin to modify the mold by carving in various modifications into the prosthesis. And this would go on until it's down to a specific shape and size that the prosthetist would determine uh, would work best for the patient. Loading different areas, this particular patient has a very sensitive distal tibia, which is marked here, and crest of his tibia, so we wouldn't want to rasp any material away from there because that would be tightening it. However, on the sides of the tibia, you can see a depression here, which was my thumb in the cast. We want to load this area, which is his anterior tibialis musculature. It can take some load, which we want to restore weight bearing to the patient as they've lost their lower limb. They need to now weight bear through areas of their limb, which normally didn't take that on. So appropriate weight distribution, shaping, uh, pressure distribution is going to allow them to uh, maintain a solid fit and a comfortable fit for all of their activities. So we would use the auto former here to pull plastic over the mold so we could make a trial socket or a diagnostic socket. And there is an oven up atop here which will heat up the plastic, which will, this carriage will move up to the top. When that is set to the parameters uh, in the auto former, it will then come down. The plastic will have become pliable and it will be vacuum formed over the mold. Uh, and that happens fairly fast. It only takes about uh, 15 minutes for the whole process, but you can time it very effectively. Uh, so you can do other things while you're working there. And when you're completed, this will be the end result where that same mold now has the socket pulled over it. And the next step would be to break out the rigid foam inside. You would be left with a finished test socket which then has an epoxy to this plate for setup purposes prior to trial walking. Once that's set up and hardened, you can place this onto prosthetic foot. So once the trial fitting is completed, we like our alignment, the fit of the socket. The next stage is to finish the prosthesis out, which entails taking it from this stage to a final finished lamination. That occurs uh, fairly quickly, where this would be refilled with plaster in a jig, cut off. Whatever design the patient may want. This is a Patriots t-shirt, which is the last layer before the lamination. Uh, the lamination is basically a liquid resin is impregnated into the fabric and the layup of carbon fiber under vacuum. And that's how this is uh, hardened, made strong uh, to support the amputee. And you can custom design anything on the outside that you want, if you wish.